guys welcome back to my channel this video is gonna be all the makeup empties from 2019 I'm a little bit late filming this considering we're halfway through January but it is what it is we're just gonna go ahead and get started with it um, everything that I finished all the makeup I finished in 2019 is in this bin I'm gonna go ahead and sort everything out into categories and then I'll show you what I finished how many products and I'll have in the description box the tally of the total amount of makeup I used up in 2019 if you're interested to see everything that I finished up please keep on watching uh, yeah let me go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and open this in and I'm gonna start sorting things out uh, actually let's let's first do the couple the two products I think these are the only two nail products I finished I finished the CVS uh, regular nail polish remover and equate beauty non acetone nail polish remover uh, I wouldn't recommend either of those I didn't really like either of them I used them just because I needed nail polish remover but if I did use a um, like a glitter nail glitter nail polish or anything like that kind of made it pretty impossible to remove with either one of these so I think that's it two nail polish removers now let me go ahead and sort these out and then uh, yeah we'll talk about those already for sponges I fin or I used up four different sponges the makeup revolution this is just like the regular full face sponge I don't know if it has a special name I really like this one I would repurchase this is the beauty blender again this is one that I really like it got to the point where it's kind of you know frayed I would repurchase this. The Elf Sponge, I think I do want to give it another shot. This one is definitely going to trash. It's I've, I've had for a long time. But this is something I think I'm, I'm considering repurchasing and trying with fuller coverage foundation. Or like really heavier foundation. I think it would be suitable for that. So I'm considering rebuying this one. This is by AOA Studio and this is like one of their mini egg sponges. I like the full size of this more than the mini. I'm going to go ahead and toss this one. I used it a couple times. It's not my absolute favorite. Again, I really like their full size better than this and I think this was just like a sponge that I picked up from like somewhere uh, maybe a TJ Maxx or a Ross or something like that it was too hard um, I, I did not enjoy it at all I did use it a couple times but this is something I will not repurchase okay next up let's talk about the powder spray powder sprays primer sprays uh, I finished four primer sprays technically primer sprays I did use the Mario Badescu skincare like the facial spray with aloe cucumber and green tea I used this guy as a, as a like a, after I apply my um, after I apply my powder over my foundation I would use this guy to kind of melt everything together uh, the same with this elf hydrating coconut mist this is I, I, I really really enjoyed this guy I would repurchase it uh, the Smashbox Primer Water, I did finish a deluxe size sample and a full size. I love both of these. Those are definitely will be repurchases in my collection. I did enjoy using them as primer mists and then I would go in with a different primer after them or I would use them the same way like after I apply a powder I would kind of like melt it into my uh, face um, using these sprays or again before I apply a normal setting spray I would use these and I, I really enjoyed um, these two a lot. The same with the e.l.f. one. The Mario Badescu, maybe if I used it more as a skincare item, I would have enjoyed it more, but using it kind of like a foundation melder thing, it was okay, not the best. Okay, for actual primers, surprisingly, I didn't finish any full sizes. Um, usually, I would have at least one, but I do have a lot of minis. <laughs> Um, not really as much as I thought I was gonna have. I do have the Too Faced Hangover RX. Um, this was a decent primer. It's kind of like a moisturizing primer. I would use it again. Um, I, I did enjoy it and the scent was lovely. Uh, Becca um, Velvet Blurring Primer. This guy I did not like at all. I actually couldn't wait to finish it. Um, I would not repurchase. I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This one I, I really, really enjoy. I do have this in a little bit larger size, not the full size, but like the travel one, the deluxe size sample. I really enjoy it. I, I, I really, really enjoy it. No problem. Uh, Priming Water by Touch and Soul. This guy I really enjoyed as well. It was kind of like a water oil kind of thing. It was gripping for the foundation. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it it's I, I do. I like it a lot. The NARS uh, Pour and Shine Control Primer. This was again really nice. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It would, again it was kind of like um, it, it helped. It helped a lot in the summertime when I would get more oily. So I enjoyed that. 
the YSL Touche Glow Blur Primer. I did not like this at all. I actually really hated this guy. I couldn't wait to finish it. It took me forever to finish it because again, I didn't really enjoy it, but I ended up using it as a, like instead of having a full face of makeup, I just put this guy to kind of like blur my uh, pores. It worked for that. Uh, the Porefessional, this is the pearl one. This was okay. It's not one of my favorite primers. This is not a, uh, it will not be a repurchase in my collection. Uh, the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Instant Soft Focus Beauty Flash. This I really enjoyed. This is, this is something I would pick up a full size of. The same with the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I really enjoyed that. The Bosha Perfecting White Charcoal Mattifying Treatment Primer. The first time I used this guy, I was like, wow, this thing is amazing. But then the more I used it, the more I'm like, no, this thing sucks um, my foundation would grip to it in like weird spots it would be so hard to um, blend out um, maybe it would be good for someone who's like super oily all year round it would be good for that but for me it, it, I liked it but then I really hated it and then I do have a sample of uh, Too Faced uh, Peach Perfect Primer this I really really enjoyed um, I my friend Valerie actually sent me a deluxe size of this guy um, and I'm looking forward to using that guy Okay, next up is my uh, foundations. <laughs> this is one of those sad ones. I finished up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten samples in a full size. Uh, yeah, only one full size foundation, and that was the Clinique Beyond Perfecting foundation and concealer i really liked it it was very full coverage um and i enjoyed it mainly like um like in the winter time it was too heavy for me in the summertime and it would get oily pr like pretty fast in the summertime uh is this something i would repurchase probably not i've tried other foundations that i like better and my preferences have changed i don't like full coverage foundation i like more like sheer light coverage maybe medium um but for full coverage this is a little bit too much it was good I enjoyed it. I'm glad to be done with it. One down out of my collection. God knows that that collection is just crazy. So one full size foundation. Now for sample foundations, uh, I really actually enjoyed these Jouer Essential Foundations. Uh, like this is also the high coverage, but this wasn't thick on the skin, if that makes any sense. It was kind of like... Um, it was well it just wasn't thick it was lightweight i didn't like feel it on my skin where the clinic i actually like could feel it on my skin this was just thin i did have to mix like a couple to get a perfect shade maybe one or two of these were a good shade and then the rest i just mixed the uh, mixed them up to get like a good shade um i will not repurchase a foundation again my preferences have changed i don't want to use full coverage foundations like this i don't feel the need to it on my particular skin um but if i were to buy a full coverage foundation between this and the clinic i would go with the jouet because it was like felt nicer on the skin. Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder uh, Youth Boosting Perfect Skin Foundation. This I really, really enjoyed. This actually in the our Giorgio Armani, I those are on my list to pick up. Um, this was very light on the skin. It did have, I would say, like a medium coverage, um, I, but I did really enjoy it. The same with the Luminous Silk Foundation by Giorgio Armani. This I really, really enjoyed. It just felt good on my face um it didn't feel super heavy I, I enjoyed it i would re i would repurchase a full size i did use up also laura mercier um uh this is the luminous i think this was the luminous foundation i did really like it the shade that they gave me uh, was the wrong shade for me the two in two linen it was too much on the pink side um if i could find a shade that matched me better this is something i would consider purchasing and it, it was like very natural very dewy on the skin uh the do you foundation by uh, Too faced i only used the one shade which which was like the shade that matched me uh the shade snow this is not something i would buy again honestly i, I have them mixed up in here when i put them back in here um anyway it doesn't really matter but the shade snow is the one that i use is it snow or was it light beige excuse me it was light beige I was gonna say there's no way I'm snow um, they're just mixed up in the in the thing I did use the one shade which is light beige uh, I am the shade light beige and born this way and the peach one um, it's at least a little bit pink on me but that wasn't the problem with this guy this kind of made me break out really bad as I remember um, it, it, it wasn't a favorite out of the foundations I've tried from Too Faced I like their other two much better than this one I would not buy this 
again that was how many foundations was that 10 but only one of them is full size yeesh okay let's talk about concealer concealers i use two full size and three sheets samples um one is by Jouer, and this is the essential high coverage liquid concealer this was really nice um i'm not in the market to buy any concealers at the moment I'm not gonna buy it um the Too faced this is the the original born this way this used to be a favorite i had finished a, a sample or not sorry not a sample a full size of this in 2018 i really really enjoyed it um i again i enjoyed this one shade but i picked up their like their con their bigger one the new born this way um I haven't tried that one yet. Actually, I've tried it only in a sample. Um, so I have this one now instead of the old one. I have it in a full size. And from this one, I only used the one shade, uh, which was my I shade Natural Beige. I actually, it did not suit me very well under my eyes. So I used it more as a foundation and it worked really well. This is a multi-use sculpting concealer. It was super full coverage to use as a foundation, but I did use it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter the rest of the shades because I don't need to be mixing colors. I have plenty in my collection, so I'm gonna get rid of those. Um, Tarte Shape Tape was the beast of 2019. Um, it was like a victory when I finished this guy. It was in my 19 and 2019. I took the stopper out and everything. I'm so glad to be done with it, but I do have another one. Go figure. And I also finished the Wet n Wild Concealer, Photo Focus Concealer. This was in the shade Light Medium Beige. I think this would have been better if it was in a little bit lighter shade. Um, again, the stopper is all out. Uh, this was, I, I remember it was being decent. I don't remember hating it or absolutely loving it. Um, the, the sharp tape, I, I really enjoy it on days that I really need the coverage. A little bit goes a very, very long way, but... Those are out. Five concealers, two full size, and three samples. For powders, this year was pretty sad. I've only actually only finished two powders, one pressed and one loose powder. Usually I have a lot more powders finished. I don't know what, what happened that last year. I finished a Maybelline uh, Fit Me Press Powder. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this one. This is like the dewy one. It's not the matte. I really, really enjoyed it. It left the skin like a luminous finish to the skin. I missed it when I finished it. And I finished AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder. And this was in the shade um, Brightening. Uh, again, this is powder that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I would be happy to have it in my life again. And for a dollar, it was a steal. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about highlighters. I finished up uh, two full-size highlighters. Actually, I don't know if you consider this full size. And I finished uh, four little samples. This is the Max Trope Cream in the shade Gold. I really enjoyed this guy as like a... I didn't use it as a... Uh, like a primer. I don't know if this is supposed to be a primer all over the face glow, but I used it as a liquid highlighter before applying my foundation. Like I put it a base all over my face. The same with this one. This guy was a uh, Peter Thomas Roth, the 24 karat like a uh, liquid illuminator. I used it in the same way. Uh, the same way I would use the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I do have this guy in full size. The Peter Thomas Roth is discontinued. Uh, the Max Strobe Cream, I have like the five mil little tubes of it i have quite a few of those in my collection i probably have five or six i really really enjoy it and uh the butter london glaze and face glow again i use it in the same way this is not something i would repurchase where i would repurchase these two for sure uh, for pressed powders i finished a wet n wild blossom glow this wasn't a project pan um i was felt very victorious when i finished it though i i I don't want to look at another shade of this in many, many years. I also finished the Becca Afterglow, um, one of the Afterglow highlighters in here. This is in the shade Moonstone. This was in my 19 and 2019. I was really happy to finish this guy. It was uh, how many grams? Um, only 1.4 grams, so I don't know if you would call it full size. It's technically a deluxe size sample or deluxe size, but nevertheless a full highlighter <laughs> so again highlighter six one full size and the rest are sample i don't know how you want to call it but six highlighters i finished up okay next up probably the saddest category in my whole makeup empties is blush 
I only used up one blush, which was this guy, um, the Mykonos, uh, this is, well, it is the shade Mykonos, and this is by Buxom. This is the only blush I finished the whole year. I was working really hard on finishing this guy by Becca. Um, this guy, the, the shade Flower Child, I do have a nice pan. It's very thin on the bottom. I think I can finish it. Um, just give it a couple weeks and I can finish it. But yeah, that was that was a fail. Um, I, I wouldn't even call this as a blush, but I, I was holding on to all the sheets, so I had to talk about this one. For bronzer, I finished only one, the same. Um, I finally finished this guy. This is in the e.l.f. palette. Uh, this is the contour palette. Um, this this is the one pro like the one shade or pan that was that I was concentrating on in 2019, which was the bronzer. I really really enjoyed it. Um, would I rebuy this palette? No, not necessarily because I don't contour often and I don't this shade. I mean, I do have a pan in it, but it's not my absolute favorite like highlighty shade. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this palette in my collection or declutter it. I might want to reach for these two again, but I was really happy to finish this bronzer. For, pro for brow products, I finished three brow mascaras and then two brow pencils. This is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Mascara. Um, I did not like how fat and like separated the bristles are on, on the brush. Um, I will not repurchase this, but these two I would repurchase either one of them. This is by Ulta Beauty and this is the brow tint in the shade medium. This was really nice and this one was really, really nice. And this is by e.l.f. the Wow Brow. This still has some fibers, but there is no more of that gel stuff that holds it to the brows. So, um, but I would really, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the brush. I would repurchase it. For brow pencils, I had the e.l.f. brow pencil, which was like one of those fat brow pencils. I did not like this. This is not my favorite. Um, the NYX micro brow, is it micro brow? Micro brow pencil, yeah. Uh, this also was not one of my favorites either. Um, if I were to reach for a micro brow pencil, I preferred the sh uh, LA Girl Shady Brow, sl like slim shady, what is it called? Shady something or the Anastasia or um, the Joa the one that I'm using now or even the Benefit one I like them more than this one. This one was just like it was a struggle finishing it but five brow pen five brow products out. For eyeliners I only have three eyeliners two well all three pencils this is like the sharpening pencil this was Rimmel uh, Scandal Eyes I love this thing I would repurchase it. Uh, this was by Smashbox, the Always Sharp uh, Waterproof Coal Liner. I honestly didn't know that I was so close to finishing this guy until I went to use it and I was able to only line one eye, not the other. That guy is out. I will not repurchase that one. And then the Stila Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner. This is also something I would not repurchase. It was okay, um, but after a while it was kind of hard to smudge it, so I had to like be very precise where I apply it. So three brow, three eyeliners. Okay, uh, I don't know if this falls under eyeliners or mascaras or whatever, but I'm calling it one of my makeup empties because this this past year I did not use any lashes and that's all because of these. These are the Grande Lash MD uh, Lash Enhancing Serum. One of them is for six months. One of them is, uh, yeah, four mil. This guy's four mil and this is the two mil, so a full year. Um, of brow products. The two mil is supposed to be a three months. The four mil is supposed to be for six months. So I finished three of these. I Those are repurchases. Again, I haven't felt the need to wear um, fake lashes ever since I discovered this product. Now, is it cheaper? Probably not, but I feel <laughs> it saves me uh, from putting lashes on. It saves me some time, basically. I think my biggest category of empties is gonna definitely be mascaras. I didn't realize how many mascaras I finished until I sat down to do this, um, which is kind of crazy. I do layer my mascaras. I on daily basis I use two or three mascaras, so it's not really that surprising. Um, but here we go. I finished seven full size mascaras and seven deluxe size samples. Uh, let's talk about the full size. I have two Too Faced Better Than Six mascaras. I like it, but towards I like it better after it's open for a couple days. But then towards the ends, it flakes really badly. I would definitely repurchase over the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. This was supposed to be a dupe for the Too Faced one. I hated the L'Oreal one. I would much rather spend ten dollars more and get the Too Faced. Um, the Wet n Wild the. Uh, 
Max Fanatic Cat Eye Magnetic I mascara. I did not like this. Um, the just the brush on it was just so fat and um, it was like that rubber. I just did not like this mascara. I couldn't wait to be done with it. Uh, ColourPop Volumizing Mascara. And this was the black one. I do have one in uh, in blue. This I really, really, really enjoyed actually, but it did start flaking really badly towards the end. I don't have a problem with mascara transferring on me. This did not transfer on me. It would like it definitely volumized my lashes. I enjoyed that. The same with the Essence Eye Heart Extreme. Uh, crazy volume mascara again this gives you like those crazy volume real fast so you gotta be very careful with this one this one when I use it I had to go with a second mascara that kind of like brushed away some of the product that this one applied otherwise I would have really spidery lashes uh, L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black this was one of those that I would use after this one because it really separated the lashes a little bit and didn't apply too much volume so that was really nice now let's up oh this is another full size why did I count it so eight full sizes is it eight yeah eight full sizes this is the Charlotte Tilbury full fat lashes um, curl separate volume length and drama um, when I first used this guy, I believe it was like trying a full face of Charlotte Tilbury video. I absolutely hated it. It sat in my collection for about a month or so. Till I was like, okay, I gotta bring this guy in. I gotta try it again. I gotta see what the hype is about. Why is it so freaking expensive? And I loved it. it, it it's one of those mascaras, kind of like the It Cosmetics. I'm surprised I don't have an It Cosmetics one. Um, kind of like the it cosmetics lash hero is it lash hero mascara it's a lot better after you open it for a while um i enjoyed it towards the end uh let's talk about two of well these are kind of my favorites but these are both by uh, pat mcgrath those are the fetish is it fetish yeah fetish eyes mascara i loved both of them definite volume and length i i really really enjoyed them but again they start flicking really badly towards the end uh, pretty vulgar what is this one called um for reals i love this this is something i consider i will repurchase at some point not anytime soon i do have a a ton of backup mascaras but i really really enjoyed it i wouldn't mind having it in my life again um the same with the pat mcgrath i do i think i have one more deluxe and i have a full size so uh, i have a deluxe size of the Too Faced better than sex i'm not gonna talk about it again i enjoy it uh, Physicians Formula Killer Curves Mascara. This was okay. It didn't. It wasn't Killer Curves or anything like that. Uh, Tarte Man Eater. Not my favorite. Um, it's not something I would repurchase. Can't believe this. I had how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mascaras. Fourteen. That is insane. Moving right along, let's do uh, setting sprays and then we'll do the lip products. For setting sprays, I finished up four full sizes and then four minis. <laughs> uh, the full sizes, the one that I will definitely repurchase is the Milani Make It Last. I do have backups of it in my collection. It actually does my makeup last. I really liked it. Um, the Catrice Prime and Fine, this was one that I really enjoyed as well. Uh, this is the Dewy Glow. I think I have a couple backups of the Dewy one. And I have a couple backups of the Multipurpose, I think it's called Multipurpose. Um, Heart Candy, Longwear, Sheer Envy. It's been so long. I finished it really close to the beginning of the year. I think I enjoyed it. Um, Elf Makeup Mist and Set. I will not repurchase this one. I kind of fell into that, um, like... I had finished it previously and then I was like, okay, I cannot miss it. Let me buy it again. I bought it again. I was like, what the hell was I thinking? I couldn't wait to finish it the first time. Why did I buy it again? Uh, MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. This guy I really enjoy. Um, I'm keeping this bottle to fill it when I go on travel. Although I don't like the spritzer on it. So maybe it would be better to keep a bottle like this. This is the Ulta Beauty Matte Makeup Setting Spray. This was pretty nice. Uh, the Tarte Stay, Sp Stay Spray. Um, this was, I didn't feel like it prolonged the wear of my makeup, I, I don't know, and this really small sample, um, and a really, really tiny sample of the Fix Plus, I enjoyed this, this um, for wetting my brush, that's how I use the MAC Prep and Prime, I either use it to wet my brush, or I use it to like melt my makeup, like my, into my skin, I don't use it as a fixing spray, so, 
There you go, four setting sprays. For lip products, I finished 11 lip products in total. Um, for lip scrub, I finished the Hanalei Sugar Lip Scrub. Uh, this was nice. I really liked the scent of it. It was kind of like a lemony, refreshing scent. I enjoyed it. Um, I did finish a couple samples. These are th three samples by Buxom. The shade Serena, Brandy, and Dolly. Serena is, uh, I think I purchased a full size of it because I really, really enjoyed it. Again, something I really enjoyed. Uh, from YSL, I finished two shades. I finished the shade Nude and the finished Red Tatouage. And those are the Tatouage Couture. Um, the other two shades are just not for me, so I'm going to go ahead and um, declutter them. But they were really nice. The Both the Red and the Nude lasted on the lips for a really long time. I finished one lip liner, a sad little one. And this is, uh, I believe this was by BH Cosmetics. Uh, yeah, this was the BH Cosmetics lip liner. Um, at the end, it kind of got like so dry that it's um, like separated from the actual pencil part. Um, it's gone. I I don't know if I repurchase this one. I, I I find that I'm not a lip liner person. Uh, for kind of lip treatment, I finished these two. This is by Ciate London Lip Luster. It was kind of like a an oily gloss. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. And this is the shade Call Me. It didn't really have much of a shade on the lips or a tint or anything like that. But I really enjoyed this product. Uh, it Cosmetics Je ne sais quoi uh, Lip Serum. <sighs> this was kind of like a product that, come on, just be done already. Um, it lasted forever. It wasn't super hydrating on the lips, but it, g it did give a nice like pinky, rosy shade to the lips. Um, I finished uh, two lip glosses. This guy is by Bare Minerals. And then I tried to take the stopper out and I just, it was, I couldn't. So it fell all the way to the bottom. So it kind of looks like there's product, but it's actually the stopper. Uh, I enjoyed this guy. This was in the shade Starlet. Um, so I think this was in a set that I purchased around Christmas time. The other two or three that were in that set, I don't enjoy as much as this shade. Um, I'm glad that I finished it. I finished the Vasante Power Oil Lip Gloss. It's one of my favorites. I do have a back backup of this guy. The shade is beautiful. It's so comfortable on the lips. Um, I really liked it. Tati, LOC Heart Tati. This is the shade Wildest Dreams. Um, a red like um, lip crayon. I liked it. It was a, a cool tone red lipstick that I enjoyed. I finished up, they're both deluxe, but this is Makeup Forever. Um, I don't know what it's called or what the shade is. Um, it wasn't that memorable apparently, but I think it was more of a shade that I could use on everyday basis. It's, technically how I finish my lip products. If I can wear it every day, if I can apply it while I'm at work without looking into a mirror, I finish it. And the same with this Tom Ford. Uh, this is the shade Indian Rose. This I really, really liked. Um, I liked the formula itself. I liked the color. I liked everything about it, but it's gone. And the last but not least is where um, blotting paper. I only finished one pack of blotting paper. This is it, you guys. Um, this is my, all of my makeup empties. I will uh, leave it in the description box, the value of this. I'm going to need to do some math. I know that I kept track of um, the value of each product while like filming my monthly empties. Um, so I just need to find them in, the, in my spreadsheet and then I'll have the value in the description box. Uh, let me go ahead and count again how many products in total that I finished. Overall, I finished 92 makeup products. Again, they're not all full sizes. Definitely some are sheets, some are deluxe sizes, but 92, I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully the value of these is around $1,000. Uh, maybe my mascaras will be the saving grace because somehow I did use all, uh, mostly high-end my high-end mas mascaras. So I don't know. Again, go ahead and check the description box if you're curious about the value of the products that I finished up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.